Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome to um, another day of the tafsir of uh, Surah Maryam um, So this inshallah will be um, the final uh, day as we complete the Surah bi'idhnillah ta'ala um, And uh, throughout this uh, month we've been going through the various lessons, the stories within the surah, just uh, as a recap, if you remember, we started with the story of the Prophet Zakaria. He wanted a son. He was making du'a. He was over 100 years old. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with Yahya. And we mentioned the story of Maryam alayhi salam, how her mother Hana wanted somebody to um, help take care of uh, Masjid al-Aqsa. And Allah blessed her with Maryam alayhi salam. And then Maryam alayhi salam herself was touched, as we mentioned, by uh, the angel Jibra'il. And... <coughs> She gave birth to Isa alayhi salam. He spoke as a baby. We went through the stories of the three babies that spoke, Isa, Juraj, and also the, the third story of the baby of the hairdresser of Fir'aun's daughter. And then uh, Allah mentioned the story of Yahya and then went through various different prophets, short um, kind of summaries of their stories, the prophet Ibrahim, the prophet Musa, the prophet Ismail. And then Allah finishes the entire surah by talking about Jannah and uh, Jahannam. And that's where we've reached up to so far. So um, as always, let's go to the first Menti question. Um, admin has also sent me um, the cumulative scores for the entire month of everyone's um, Menti. So where you came in the entire month. So inshallah, I'll mention that at the end. Um, I've only got the top 10, but I'll mention who are the top 10 uh, of the entire month, uh, inshallah. So right, let's go to the first Menti question of the day. Um, the code is 18312798, it's pinned in the YouTube comments. Ready, steady, bismillah. So the question is, how many of the five questions on the Day of Judgment relate to money? What do you think? One, two, or three, what did we say? Oh, Charles, very quick. Okay, correct, two. So we said yesterday that two out of the five questions Allah will ask us, uh, will be about money. I'll ask, Allah will ask us how we attained our money and what we did with our money. Um, okay, top of the leaderboard so far. First place is uh, Yusuf. Second place, Zay. And third place, Ola. Right. Um, so let's carry on from where we left off. So we're currently on verse number 89. We've got 10 left. So Allah says, You have put forth something uh, monstrous. What's Allah talking about? Allah is talking about how people ascribe to him a son. Yesterday, remember, we mentioned that some say Uzair was the son of Allah. Others say Isa is the son of Allah. Um, and it's like Allah saying, you know, you know, when you're disappointed in somebody, I'm so disappointed, I can't even look at you. That, that's how the expression is like, you know, how could you even say this? Then Allah says in verse 90, that the skies are ready to burst. The earth is ready to split and the mountains are ready to fall down because of what you say. Now, what's Allah telling us here? Allah is saying that the skies, the mountains and the earth are so upset by, are, are so, um, you know, uh, taken aback by what people are saying that Allah has a son, that they're literally about to split. Now, why is it that they haven't split? Allah says he doesn't allow them to, but on the day of judgment, Allah is saying he will allow them to, he will give them permission. Um, now, talking about mountains, let's go to the next mount, uh, mount let's go to the next Menti question. Um, remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he talked about Man Uhud. For anyone that's been to, um, to Saudi Arabia, if you go to Medina, um, you can visit Man Uhud. It's, it's very close by Masjid al -Nabawi. And Man Uhud is about 7.5 kilometers uh, in length. It's huge. Okay, 7.5 kilometers in length. Now, with that in mind, let's go to the next Menti question. Ready? Steady? Bismillah. The question is, you can get the reward, the size of Mount Uhud when you, there's a typo there, when you what? When you read Surah Baqarah, when you read Surah Yasin, or when you pray the Janazah prayer. What do you think? You can get the reward, the size of Mount Uhud, 7.5 kilometers on your good scales, when you do what? Is it when you read Surah Baqarah, read Surah Yasin, or pray the Janazah prayer? What do you think? Okay, so most people got it wrong. So the correct answer is praying the Janazah prayer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that um, whoever prays the Janazah prayer, you get the order of a Qirat. A Qirat is the size of Mount Uhud. Imagine coming on the Day of Judgment and you, on your good scales, it's 7.5 kilometers of this huge 
um, you know, like good deeds. And what is it? Because you pray the janaz of salah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, hadith Sahih Bukhari Sahih Muslim said, uh, whoever follows the janaz of salah to the graveyard, you get two qira, two sizes of man uhud on your scales on the day of judgment. So it's really important whenever you get an opportunity to pray a janazah prayer, to try and pray, the reward is, is huge. Okay, then next verse. And Rahmani Walada. Allah says that the reason that the skies and the mountains and the earth are so you know upset and about to, to literally fall apart is because of what you said that Allah has a son. And it's not befitting that Allah should have a son. Okay. Now um, it's really interesting here that the way Allah describes different subjects in Islam in the Quran is is uh, in the when we look at it, is, is very different. So, for example, when it comes to, let's say, fiqh. Fiqh uh, is through rulings, jurisprudence, um, how we pray, salah. So Allah doesn't tell us, you know, you need to pray this many rakah, you need to pray like this at this time. In the Quran, Allah just says, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَتُوا zakah. Give your salah, give your zakah. And, then, you know, it's, it's a bit open uh, from that angle. But when it comes to iman, Allah makes it clear. In terms of iman, we believe that there is, Allah is the, um, only deity worthy of worship there. He has no son. Uh, so Allah makes in terms of e principles of Iman is very clear that we believe and took Nubilahi wa Malaikati. We believe in the angels, we believe in the day of judgment um, and Qadr and so on. Then the next verse, in Kullu man fi samawati wal ard illa atir rahmani abda. Then Allah says, everything in the skies and everything on the earth is a slave to Allah, is a servant of Allah. Okay. Um, now, what does this mean? This means that every single created thing, uh, inanimate, even inanimate things, let's say like, I don't know, insects, ants, the moon, the stars, everything, is in a state of submission to Allah. Okay. Um, now, let's go to the next mentee question to help us explain this. Let me bring up the next mentee question. Top three of the leaderboard so far had a change in the leaderboard. First place is the Nabi family. Second place is Ola. Third place is 80. Right. Next mentee question. Uh, remember the code is 18312798. Ready, steady, bismillah. The question is, is a bit slow today. Uh, the sun prostrates to Allah every day. True or false? True or false? The sun prostrates to Allah every day. True or false? What do you think? What do you think? True or false? Okay, so most of you got it right. The correct answer is true. The sun prostrates to Allah. Now, how is it that the sun prostrates to Allah? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in a hadith, the hadith in Sahih Muslim, he said, do you know where the sun goes after at sunset, meaning at Maghrib time? Do you know where the sun goes? And the companion said, Allah and um, Allah's messenger know best, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, at the time. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it goes beneath the throne and it asks for permission to rise so Allah gives it permission. So how this happens, the intricate details of exactly how this happens, we don't know. But the sun prostrates under the throne of Allah at Maghrib time, as I mentioned in this hadith in Sahih Muslim. Okay. Then Allah says, لَقَدْ أَحْصَاهُمْ وَعَدَّهُمْ عَدَّى That um, Allah takes to account everybody. And Allah has everybody's exact details, meaning how many good deeds you have, how many bad deeds you have. Allah knows the exact number and the exact details. Okay. Now the word ahsa also reminds me of another verse uh, where Allah says in the Quran, in Allahi la tuhsuha, that if you were to count the number of blessings Allah has given you, you would never be able to count them. Imagine that's the blessing of having a heart that beats, you know, a heart that beats, how many times does a heart beat? A minute. Uh, between 60 and 100 on average. So imagine 60 times for every time your heart beats, um, and that's just one beat. Imagine one beat, you have four chambers within the heart. So four times per every second, we need to be giving thanks to Allah, and for every second of a day of our day that we live in, for every minute and for every hour, just, just for the heart, and all of the other things that we have, our eyes, our ears, the ability to breathe, all of these things, Allah says, if we were to count every single blessing, we would never be able to count them. Uh, and that's why it's really important um, that we always thank Allah for what we have. Um, and Allah says, uh, you know, Allah talks about those that give shukr to him, those that thank him, those that are grateful to him. And, uh, and Allah says that um, that those that are grateful to him, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ That Allah will give you more. So the more you thank Allah for what you have, the more you thank Allah for your clothes, for your money, for your family, 
for your whatever it may be, your job, Allah will give you more. Okay, it's a promise from Allah in the Quran. And when Allah promises something, He never breaks His promise. Right, the next verse. So Allah says, everybody on the Day of Judgment now is going to come individually. Now, um, we know uh, the famous narration that when somebody dies, three things accompanies a person to the grave. Your children, your, meaning your family, your money, the wealth that you have, and your good deeds. Two of them will leave you and only one will stay. Your children, your family, your friends, after they've buried you, they will leave. Your money, it stays in your bank account. The what will, you will take with you is your good deeds, okay? Um, so everyone's going to come individually on um, the Day of Judgment. Then Allah says, Allah says, those who they believe, but not just believe. It's not just about being Muslim. It's not just about that. Allah says, you have to do good deeds, okay? That Rahmanu, that Allah will or Ar Rahman will make them uh, will, they will be uh, beloved to Allah. Now let's go to the next menti question. Uh, top of the leaderboard, first place the Nabi family, second place Ola, third says 80. Next menti question coming up now. Ready, steady, bismillah. The question is one of Allah's names is Al Wadud. Al Wadud, what does it mean? The most merciful, the most loving, or the most generous? The most merciful, the most loving, or the most generous? What do you think? What does Al Wadud mean? Allah's name, Al Wadud. Does it mean the most merciful? Does it mean Allah is the most loving? Or does it mean Allah is the most generous? What do you think? Okay, most people got this wrong. So the correct answer is the most loving. The most generous would be Al Karim. Allah's name, Al Karim, would be the most generous. The most merciful would be Ar-Rahman. Al-Wadud refers to love. So we've had a change in the leaderboard. Uh, first place Zakaria, second place Zay, and third place Sana. Um, right, so Allah mentions that at the end of this verse. That he will bestow their love upon him. Um, and when it comes to worshipping Allah, it's like climbing a mountain. Initially it's hard. It's hard work getting up. It's hard work getting up to pray Fajr. It's hard work going to the masjid for taraweeh, it's hard work fasting, it's hard work, you know, giving sadaq all the time. But when you reach the top of that mountain, then you start to enjoy what you have done, you know, it becomes enjoyable and you start to enjoy the ibadah. For us, we're on that journey, we're on that journey, but we have to keep going, keep climbing, keep using that rope, getting closer to Allah. And when you reach that level, then inshallah, you'll start to uh, enjoy it. Um, the other point to mention here is, Salihat refers to deeds, but it doesn't refer to every single good deed. It refers to deeds that can be few in number, which means that Allah is saying that he's not looking for us to do every single good deed under the sun, but Allah is looking for us to see who tried their best. Maybe somebody will find fasting easy. Maybe you know they'll be able to fast extra days. Maybe somebody finds Quran easy. They would recite more Quran. Maybe somebody finds giving sadaqah easy. And they will give more sadaqah. But there's something that Allah has bestowed upon all of us that we will be able to do, that we should you know, try and increase a little bit in. Um, and this is the last time, actually, that Allah mentions Ar-Rahman, his name Ar-Rahman in the surah. And we mentioned that th that's the theme of this surah, that it has uh, Allah's name, Ar-Rahman, uh, mentioned uh, 16 times. Now let's go to the next Menti question. Uh, bring it up now. Right, next minty question coming out. Ready, steady. Bismillah. The question is, who brought up Maryam? Who brought up Maryam? Isa, Yahya, or Zakaria? What do you think? Isa, Yahya, or Zakaria? Who brought up Maryam? Isa, was it Prophet Isa? Was it Prophet Yahya? Or was it Prophet Zakaria? Last couple of seconds. Who do you think brought up Maryam? Alayhi salam. Okay, and uh, mashallah, everyone got it right. So the correct answer is Prophet Zakaria. So Prophet Zakaria was the one, her uncle, who brought up Maryam alayhi salam. And that was from the Rahmah of Allah. So there's so many um, stories about the Rahmah of Allah in this surah, about Isa alayhi salam, about Ibrahim. His father said, I will stone you, I will literally kill you, I'm going to kick you up. And it showed the Rahmah of Allah, Allah preserved Ibrahim 
how Allah, um, you know, uh, enabled him to become a prophet and guided, uh, you know, even his sons, Ismail and Ishaq. Um, okay. Then Allah says, فَإِنَّ بِلِسَانِكَ So Allah says, we have made the Qur'an easy for your tongues, okay? لِتُبَشِّرَ بِهِ الْمُتَّقِينَ So that we can give glad tidings, we can, you know, um, tell people that there's something good that's awaiting for you. وَتُنْذِرَ بِهِ قَوْمَ الْلُدَّةِ And we can also give warnings to those who may be not on the straight path, okay? Um, it's interesting to note that at the beginning of surahs, when you look at the beginning of the surahs in the Qur'an, a number of them will start with um, what's known as the huruf muqatta'a, which is, for example, alif, lam, mim. They're letters that are disjoint and brought together. Alif, lam, ra, kaf, ha, ya, ayn, sad. Um, all of these types of letters. Uh, 29 of the surah start with them. And all, all of them, after they have these disjointed letters like alif, lam, mim, it all, always mentions the Qur'an afterwards. Apart from two surahs, this is one and surah al ankabut is the other. Um, in this particular surah, Surah Maryam, Allah talks about the greatness of the Qur'an right to the end, which is now in the last, in the last couple of verses. Um, but all of the other surahs, if you find, if you hear uh, an imam reciting Alif Lam Mim or Ha Mim, then you know the next few verse or next few verses are going to be talking about the greatness of the Qur'an. Um, okay. So Allah then says, but how many generations before have we destroyed? Okay. Um, so what's Allah telling us here? He's telling us, look at the people that came before and learn from their mistakes. Okay, learn from their mistakes. It's also important to not just learn from other people's mistakes, but learn from their ibadah as well. This is something I learned, particularly in Egypt. Um, when you uh, stay with, with other scholars and so on, and you see their ibadah, and it's very easy to, to you know, uh, where we need to pick up on what other people do and learn from how they worship Allah so we can implement that in our lives. Now let's go to the next menti question to explain that. Uh, right, last menti question of this year. Okay, ready, steady. Bismillah. The question is, Bilal's footsteps are in Jannah because what did the Prophet ﷺ said was special about Bilal? Because he gave sadaqah, because he prayed two rakah post wudu, or because he memorized the Qur'an. Why did the Prophet ﷺ say, I've heard your footsteps in Jannah? What is it that you do? What did Bilal say? Did Bilal say, because I give sadaqah, is it because he prayed two rakah, or is it because he memorized the Qur'an? Okay, so most people got it right, mashallah. So the correct answer is because he prayed after he did wudu. And this is one of the things that I picked up on, uh, particularly in Egypt. Um, after you do wudu, always try to pray to rakah. Always try to pray. And it's such a small thing, but the reward is huge, okay, in terms of this is what happened to Bilal, his footsteps were in Jannah because of this. And it's not just that, but you pray, you do your wudu, and then you say the dua after wudu, and every, you know, uh, time you're going to Ruku and Sajda and every Tasbih, all of these things will testify for you. Um, so really important that we learn from other people's ibadah. If somebody's sitting and you see them, they're doing the dhikr after the salah, it should be a reminder for ourselves to do dhikr after the salah. Um, if somebody's in the masjid, they're waiting for maghrib and they're making dua again, it should be a reminder for us. So all of these things you want to learn, not just from the mistakes of other people, in terms of Allah mentions those that came before us, but also those that are with us and how we can uh, improve in our ibadah. Right, top 10 of the leaderboard today. First place, Zakaria. Second place, Sana. Third place, Sa'adiyah. Fourth, Selma. Fifth, is 80. Sixth, Z, 70 arrows. Eighth, Zay, Ninth, the Nabi family. And 10th, Ola. Right, what I will do, let me open up for the open queue. Now, I'm going to bring up the top 10 for the entire month now. So, admin kindly uh, sent me the top 10. Let me read it out. Okay, so this is the top 10. For the entire month, uh, mashallah, may Allah reward everybody uh, for their patience um, and for their contribution. So, first place, okay, for this year, 2024, Menti. Okay, in first place was Ola, mashallah, well done to Ola, with a total of 102,970. Uh, okay, second place was Um Arkham. Third place was Habnabs, fourth place was Yusuf, fifth Zakaria, sixth is 80, seventh the Arrows, eighth Sana Tawfiq, ninth Sa'adia, and tenth was A. So well done to everybody who participated this year. Um, uh, those were the top 10 for the entire 
uh, month, alhamdulillah. Right, so if you have any questions, then please feel to put them in to YouTube and the YouTube comments or Menti. Um, admin has actually added another slide after the Q&A, just for any feedback, anything you'd like to change, anything you feel we can do better, anything you feel we did well. Um, okay, first question, can you smoke shisha? No, you cannot smoke shisha. Shisha, um, as the British Heart Foundation says, is actually worse than smoking cigarettes. There's a statistic, I think it's equivalent, uh, one hour of shisha is something like equivalent to 1,000 or 500 cigarettes, it's something, huge number, um, so no. Um, while doing wudu, should we wipe the ears and the head as well, or is it enough to wipe the head? No, you should wipe over your head and also wipe the back of your ears. Um, is there a hadith about it's better to vomit when you eat and drink standing up? Uh, I haven't come across that, to be honest. You can eat and drink standing up. Uh... If I wake up late for Fajr, should I pray ASAP or wait for after the No, you pray Fajr as soon as you wake up. Uh, unless it's during that time of sunrise, that 10, 15 minutes after sunrise, you wait for those 10, 15 minutes after sunrise and then you pray it. Okay, let's have a look here. Um... If I sell my gold jewelry today, I will, but I will not get paid the current price of gold, but much less, should I pay zakat? On the current amount, you pay zakat on, on, on whatever value you're getting for the gold. So if you're selling your gold for a thousand pounds, you pay zakat for a thousand pounds. Is 15th of Sha'ban in a hadith about forgiveness authentic? It sounds similar to the other. Uh, there is a difference of opinion on the authenticity of that hadith. Is zakat on all, all gold or if it's above a certain amount? So the way you work out your zakat is uh, work out the value of your gold. So let's say you have gold that's, I don't know, value 200 pounds. So you have 200 pounds, then you add that onto the value of any cash that you have. So you look in your bank account and you say you've got 1,000 pounds. So you've got 1,000 plus 200 and you pay zakat on, on the total. Um, okay, I think that's most of the questions. So admin has, if you click to the next slide, uh, is that an open slide? A menti? Um, yeah. So I don't know if that, if you can, if you have anything you would like to feed back to ourselves, as I say, good or bad, then I think you can put that in menti or drop it in the YouTube comments. Um, can you please do tafsir classes for Kisu Raza, Sutul Kafi, Yasin Rahman, may Allah bless you. May Allah bless us all, Jazakal Khair. So we have actually covered in the past years. Surah Kaf, Surah Yasin, uh, not Surah Rahman. We've covered Surah Kaf and Surah Yasin. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, I think that's most of the questions. Do you only pay zakat if it's below the nisab rate? Um, I didn't understand that question, sorry. So if you add up the value of your gold, so let's say you weigh your gold, and your value is, value is 500 pounds, and you add you, your cash that you have is 1,000 pounds. You have to add up the two together and then do 2.5% of that. I hope that's clear, inshallah. Uh, okay, I think that's everything. Do you recite, Alasman, do you recite Fatiha after the Imam recites it? Yeah, there's a few different opinions on this. Um, so, if the Imam is reciting, let's say Maghrib, for example, he's reciting Fatiha aloud, you don't need to recite it. In the third rakah, when it is silent, then you would recite Surah Fatiha, uh, if that makes sense. But there's a few different views, they're all authentic, it's just a difference of opinion, but, but they're all authentic. Um, okay, so I think let's stop there, I think that's all of the questions I've answered. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us all throughout this month of journey, our uh, journey through the Qur'an and our ibadah, our fasting, our prayers, our Qur'an. And um, inshallah, we hope to see you soon. Wa jazakum al khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.